So this is the first time we've done something like this. Uh, we're really excited. We're giving away some crazy stuff tonight, but I want to get into how we're doing that. So before, I know you, some of you guys have seen the swag that we're giving away tonight. Before I get into that, here's what you got to do if you want to win anything. We're giving away 15 toolkits. That's this guy. If you want to win that, you have to ask a question to one of our ambassadors. And if we pick that question to ask each of them, we're going to ask five questions per ambassador. So five questions for JD, Willie, Pedro, and Juan. If we pick your question, you've won a new, brand new item of swag. So that's how we're doing it. Now, what are we giving away? Some of you have seen this video circulating around, but this is, and some of our reps just debuted it. This is the new Liga 9 survival kit. So in that, you have everything you need. I mean, there's the, the uh, zombie apocalypse is on the way. So what do we got for you? We got a Liga 9 knife. Look at this thing. I'm not going to be able to do the wapa like JD did in his video, but this thing is, this thing is nice, man. So we got that. Then I also have, look at this. I feel like a professional YouTuber. I'm doing my first unboxing for you guys. A Liga 9 flashlight. Battery's not included. And also to top it all off, look at this. A beautiful Liga Pravada backpack. It's got the strap on it and everything. JD says he loves the strap. So in order to do that, we need you guys to start flooding these YouTube comments or the uh, Facebook and Instagram comments with some questions for our guys. So now something else that's going on that's pretty exciting is I am one lucky son of a gun because I'm smoking the brand new. And once we get on this, the road, guys, we're going to come with these, these Liga kits and we're going to come with this. Oh, it's like the Ark of the Covenant opening. This is yep. the brand new Year of the Rat. You don't deserve it, bro. They don't deserve it, but we're giving it to. Oh, I don't deserve it. Deserve I was like, it. wow, that's that's wild. <laughs> so we're we're before I get everybody going, I have one final thing. I'm like, I'm bringing all the goodies. Now this statue, this beautiful statue that Rich Lai has been bugging me to get. This is the Rat of the Year statue. <laughs> so I've been guarding it with my life during this quarantine. It's under my pillow. You know how hard it is to sleep on this. It's brutal. But during the quarantine, I've been guarding this. Now every ISSC we're giving out these raffle tickets so we do these raffles quarterly and annually at the end of the year we're going to give away the rat of the year so if we pick you you not only get this statue but you're going to get to come down to the office you're going to get to hobnob with the guys we're going to take you out we might take you to get some dim sum i haven't read the terms and conditions on this specific giveaway but you're going to come down to the office and then we're going to pay for you to go to every single barn smoker in 2021 you get to keep this statue you're the king consumer the dirtiest rat of them all so now I have done all the talking. You probably are sick and tired of hearing from me. So I am going to introduce some of my cohorts. Now I'll start with Mr. Jonathan Drew. Mr. Jonathan Drew, where are you coming to us live from and what are you drinking tonight? Hey, Jack. Nice introduction there and welcome to <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, you, man. This is, this is surreal for me. If you would have told me four years ago that I'd be interviewing Jonathan Drew, and, and usually it goes the other way. I mean, usually the boss interviews the employee. This is wild. I don't know how I feel about this. Well, I'm here in Wynwood, brother. I'm in, uh, I'm in Miami. I'm in the Wynwood district over at the Wynwood Safe House, what I like to call it. And, uh, you know, really uh, appreciating all the work that the Drew Estate team did in the back end and stuff. So looking forward to tonight, brother. In terms of... Uh, in terms of what I'm drinking, I started off with a, uh, I started off with a Stranahan's tonight. Okay. From my boy Rob Dietrich, and uh, over there in Colorado. But, I'm a Colorado uh, guy. Love Stranahan's. Love Stranahan's. Yeah, I didn't know that. Man. Yeah, I got. This <laughs> he hooked me up with a uh, early on when he was working on the um, the uh, snowflake, which every Ooh. year the snowflake. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice one. That's it's people camp out for that. Now, we're also joined by Master Blender of Drew Estate Cigars, Willie Herrera. Willie, what are you smoking on? What are you drinking on? Where are you coming to us live from today? Well, I am coming live from my porch in the back of my house. I am smoking original Herrera Esteli. And uh, as of right now, I'm drinking Diet Coke. Ah. But I will be switching very shortly on to, <laughs> I'm not sure what. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. You gotta you gotta you gotta <laughs> monitor that. You I I gotta pace myself, man. <laughs> All right, now Pedro Gomez, you are not in a hotel currently. Can you tell the people what you're drinking and where you are? Yo, everybody. For first of all, thank you everybody for watching this show. 
Uh, I'm here in Fontainebleau, not the hotel <laughs> in Miami Beach, but I'm here in the neighborhood in, in Miami. So tonight I'm smoking the underground dog, man. I'm smoking the underground dog, man. I'm drinking the Flor de Cane. Seven Ooh. years. Oh boy, this stuff is 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 going great. <laughs> they should put you on the they should put you on the payroll, Pedro. You're like you're like <laughs> really you're you're representing them hard as well. Now speaking of Florida Kanye, we got a gentleman coming to us from the home, the heart of Nicaragua, Mr. Juan Martinez. Juan, how's it going? What are you smoking on? What are you drinking? How are you doing this evening? What's up, guys? Uh, it's great to be here, uh, Jack. Always a pleasure, my friend. Yes. Um, smoking. Uh, Antonio Chete this afternoon. I'm actually Ooh. two hours behind you, so I haven't uh, uh, uncorked my bottle yet. I will do so soon. Thanks yeah, for having you guys. Marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think I think there's no better way to start than cracking into it. Jonathan Drew, you so we to to kind of let everybody peek behind the curtain during this uh, this time. We've been working remote. We've been in our conference rooms similar to this. We've been zooming. And sometimes when the, when the, when the office closes, we still are in these same conference rooms. We're kind of hanging out drinking. And you had mentioned, and this, this kind of, this intrigued me and this alarmed me and almost scared me. You said you had to prepare what you were drinking or your whole collection for tonight. Now, if I were to prepare, and I think you mentioned Pappy Van Winkle, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything, but if I had to prepare my Pappy Van Winkle collection, it would go like this. Here it is. There's nothing. What is going on over there? Yeah, Jack. Thanks. But uh, you, I don't know who it was. One of you asked about it, about the Pappy Van Winkle collection and stuff. And I, I did need to prepare for it because they're kind of spread out throughout the, the, the spot over here. I put it for you over here. But uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it that good. Oh, my goodness. Hold on a second over here. Mm -hmm. so, Boom. Kind of see it over there like that, man. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the Pappy Van Winkle stuff, Jack, it's been a while that we've been uh, working with them. We did the uh, the Pappy Van Winkle Bow Fermented a couple of years ago, I guess like five or six years now. So we've had a good long relationship with them. It's been, for us, you know, a huge feather in our hat, something we've had a lot of fun with. Uh, getting to work with the Van Winkles was cool. So, you know, when we do a lot of... You know, uh, our barn smokers, when we do a lot of our experiential events and stuff like that, we get a lot of support from the Van Winkles. They they really have been down with everything we've done. But we also, beyond that, just the whole spirits community has been really good to us. And Drew State's had a really long history of working with communities outside of our, you know, outside of the cigar community. So with uh, Angels Envy, we got uh, Kyle's done a lot of stuff with us at the barn smokers, you know, and uh, uh Oh, the other one, is this one? the MB Rowland. Oh my God. Yeah, so he's been cool with us too, doing a lot of the barn smokers with us. We get a pretty big liquor, you know, uh, segment out there who comes to our events. Now with all these guys handling the barn smokers, you know, the marketing department at Drew Estate, they've been growing these things to 800, 900 people come for each one of these giant kind of, they turn into like a festival. Mm. So we got great food. We got a lot of, you know, food purveyors doing cool stuff. And, uh, you know, so the liquor side of it's a lot of fun for us. And we work well with them. So it's always been a big part of what we do. And uh, that goes into other things, like we were saying, you know, with fashion, there's a lot of fashion stuff that we have going throughout the company, different companies who are working with us and definitely on the art world. You know, we've done a lot there too. So yeah, that's where we're doing a lot of cool stuff, a lot of fun stuff. It's been 23 years that we've, built in graffiti and art into our platforms across the board. Cause that's what, how we always looked at Drew Estate. It wasn't Drew Estate, the cigar company it was Drew Estate Rebirth of Cigars. So from the very beginning, everything's been that combination between early on that urban feel, you know, the hip hop, a lot of strong on the, definitely and always been on the graffiti and the art side. And that was how subculture studios tied in too. So Really, when you look at the stuff at Drew Estate, whether it's the moment and the mood that we're in from a standpoint of the products that we bring along with us, and it's not merchandising from a standpoint of having a partnership to flip sneakers or a partnership to flip cigars. It's more like our lifestyle. And that's kind of, you know, mm. 
Now you, when we were, we were talking earlier, you have some pretty crazy, I mean, just visible behind you, you have some pretty crazy art. You had a specific piece that you had showed me earlier. Do you still have that, that one behind you? Yeah. That's oh, a, oh great, boy. That's a, a good one. Pedro. Go. I don't you remember this going way back, way back where for those out there who know our Drew Estate logo, uh, when you go back 20 years or so and you start to think about how we designed that, where the first ideas came into creating the Drew Estate logo, uh, this piece was kind of what set it off. This piece right here. Hell yeah, that's right. This is, I don't know if you remember that, but that piece right there is about 20 years old, which was at the time our logo were, uh, our logos were rat wireless. <laughs> <laughs> that was our logos, was rat wireless. And it was fun, it was cool, it was early on. Um, but that from that piece right there is kind of like where we started to move into Drew Estate, rebirth the cigars and try to illuminate for us you know, our New York centric space, our New York centric mind space. Cause when I moved to Nicaragua, this was like 98 full time move and living there. I was really missing New York. I moved to Nicaragua with very little music, no TVs at the time. There was no cell phones. There was no phones until recently, cell phones, seven, eight, 10 years ago or something. So, you know, feeling New York and having New York and Brooklyn around us as we developed in Esteli was really uh, intensive for for the psychological space to build the brands and think about what it is we want to you know, show to the public. Yeah. Remember, Jack, back then, it wasn't like sales. Our sales department would say, hey, this is how many cigars we need of Cuba Cubas, or this is how many Liga Provadas we need. We would just produce what we want to. Yeah. And we'd ship the shit, and we'd be like, did it sell? <laughs> and like, yes. You know, Send more of that shit. That one with the, you know, the twist on the cap, you know, oh yeah, you, you want that cap like that? Yeah, make it longer. All right. So we would just then produce 300 boxes yeah. and ship to New York, to Brooklyn at the time. So we started so irregular like that. And a lot of that New York, it was Nicaragua to, to man at that time, it was New York to Manhattan because Marv had already moved to Manhattan. So, but that was that was the back and forth at that point. So all of those early emblems, all that early thinking, it wasn't like, how do we create a lifestyle brand? No one gave a shit about creating a lifestyle brand. We were worried about making sure that we had electricity on and that a few people got enough payments, not really got paid like a salary, but they got enough payments that they could like help out the next day. You know, people's parents helping. It was crazy. That's awesome. Now we are going to get into, and I think we, it's time we start giving away stuff. That's one of my favorite things to do. I'm, I'm sure it's one of your favorite things, JD. Now, just to remind people, maybe people tuned in at the beginning or they missed it. If you ask questions throughout the show, if we pick your question and we ask it to one of the ambassadors, that is how you'll win a prize. So the first question for JD, this comes from Rich Riley. Uh, Jonathan Drew, do you have a favorite stick and why is it your favorite? All right, so favorite cigar. Willis likes that. You know, <laughs> do, do that little clinging thing again. Yo, that, that's my shit, man. My boy from Holland. <laughs> it's a ring. And when <laughs> you like, yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't know the ring. You just, you just, that's a New York thing, Willie. You know what I'm saying? You don't know much about that. No. Oh. No, I know the I know the Miami thing, the three hundred five thing. That, that's all right, Holmes. <laughs> that's all right. Right now, out to New York City and to Brooklyn and the boroughs for everybody who's going through it to our servicemen and women, all the people on the front line. I just want to say to New York, we're with you. We're watching. God bless you. So, what was it you asked, Jack? So, what is your favorite, or do you have a favorite stick, and why is it your favorite? Oh, yeah. So what I was going to say about what, what, where Willie started laughing is probably because I'll say like this. There's really two types of cigars in this world. That's it. And he knows what I mean, because that, that, that was my first lesson. <laughs> <laughs> 
that was my first lesson. Well, right. there's two types of cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You can finish it off. No, no, no. So, yeah, that, that was Willie's first lesson. So there's two types of cigars, and that's it. And uh, there's the ones that sell, and there's the ones that fucking don't sell. So my favorite ones are the ones that get got the action. <laughs> the ones that got the action going on, where people are making them at the factory excited, where people are selling them well, where people are responding to them, where the Rich Lies and Duques and Matty Rocks of the world are going bananas and people are going wild. You know, that I find a lot of fun in that because I really don't care if somebody smokes a Quebec Special or Liga Privado or a Acid Cuba Cuba, this or that. You know, for me, my favorite one is when we turn it up, when we, when we get it hot, when we do something that's just causing a stir. People, when they were talking about like stalk cutting, uh, I hear retailers talk about it now. And I say, wow, man, that's something that's an emblem, even though we didn't create it because it's been done for hundreds of years. It's something that we propagated out there, that we put it into the space for people to understand what the difference between priming a tobacco or leaf on a plant or stalk cutting it. So for me, um, if I was to pick a favorite in terms of uh, emotional, it's emotional, psychological for me would probably be the, uh, while the Herrera Esteli and the Hoya de Nicaragua are very close seconds, right <laughs> there, right there, uh, I would have to probably say that, you know, uh, Acid Cuba Cuba is for me just kind of like this pillar of beauty and passion and love you know the acid brand has always stood for freedom that's what it stands for and you look through the you know research out there and you'll see what the brand really comes down to the brand is about being free and what comes with being free and that enjoyment that pleasure, that moment where it's where you're by yourself in a moment where you're just hustling out there like crazy or, you know, a moment now when we come out of here from out of, out of, out of the, the lockdown, when we people light up that first light up where they go, I feel, you know, you just feel good. So the Cuba Cuba is that is that that cigar that just illuminated it changed the world. And that's something that I'm really proud of the Drew Estate because I love this company. I love it dearly. And it's hard to change the world, especially if you're looking to change the world for no good fucking reason. If you're just looking to be changing the world to put your name on a list, it's really not what makes me really respect it that much. But when people change the world because something they believed in or something they do so beautifully or something they're able to craft so meticulously and not get stuck in the people saying you can't do it, you know, when that magic happens, it's very organic, you know, so the acid Cuba Cuba has that theme has run through the acid brand. And that theme has has penetrated into the into the Drew Estate mark, the Drew Estate brand, La Grand Fabrica in Nicaragua, you know, and when you think about that back and forth, that's juxtaposition between Nicaragua and for so many people who are probably watching and taking part tonight. And first of all, thank you for doing that because you guys, man, we are so with you right now. We are so with you across, across the globe and our Jewish state people have always been with us. We through a lot of tough times, through a lot of tough times over the last 20, 23 years. So, you know, I uh, think that this second question kind of ties into that, where you were going with that a little bit, we got a transition. I'm, I'm a pro here. This is not my first rodeo. The second question, congratulations, Mr. Conan McQuaid. He asked JD, what is the difference between your cigars and everyone else's? <laughs> <laughs> my boy from, from Amsterdam. Uh, actually, he's from Rotterdam. Rotterdam Stair. Uh, our cigars and everybody else's. That's an that's a, that's a interesting question. Um, 10 or 15 years ago, my answer to that would be very different than what it is now. Uh, uh, kill that. Let me, get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. Let me get that. All right, cool. 
So, sorry about that, homie. No, you're good. So, um, Long time ago, you know, the answer to that would be very different. It would be more based on uh, what makes our cigars different would have been more based on the uh, taste of our cigars, on the smell, the allure, um, maybe about how we roll a cigar, about our draw, how it's always so meticulous because I'm big into that. So from from an earlier younger JD would be probably more focused on the technical side of things in terms of combustion, leaf placement, looking at seconds, living in Nicaragua for 19 years, you know, that's kind of where you get up in the morning and your head is on how to roll cigars better, differently, not worried about the other companies. So in terms of what makes our cigars different, it, it's, it's not about the love and it's not about the passion because I really have to commend all of the, the Fuentes and Padrones and Davidoffs and Olives, all, all those different, especially our factories and, and family in Nicaragua, our other factories who are there, uh, from the oldest guys who've been there before us, the Knoxes of the world and, and the Hoyt Nicaragua is down to Skip Mar and his team, everybody who's out there from top to bottom. Uh, but our cigars are different because it's our style. You see, Drew Estate got style. Other people got some tastes and they got the flavorettes and the this isn't the that. So I don't care. Everybody's got something going on that's got some type of, you know, perplexity to it. But from our side, it's the style, man. You know, even thinking about how we zigzag Zigula. I was born on the same day as Rizza from the Wu-Tang Clan. Same day. I probably shouldn't say that shit for the security reasons. But the zigzag Zigula, when, when Drew Estate was just plowing through products that are innovative, crazy, bananas, things people couldn't put their mind to, Kentucky Fire Cure, or working through, you know, coffee-infused style products, zigzagging to Willie with a Cuban, our first Cuban leadership at the company, our a new Cuban approach to how we roll cigars, because we've always been straight up centric Nicaragua, Centric New York, Brooklyn, we always, we never were about that, like little Havana, Havana this, Havana that, Cuban schmoop. We, we didn't go that route. It was somebody else's route. So when we dub, when we zigzagged and brought Mr. Herrera to Nicaragua for his first time, I remember the trip. That was, you know, so answer to the question is, are cigars are different? In like, every <laughs> and this now now jd it's almost like you're it's almost like we're in lockstep because this third question kind of goes along that same line i mean we're in beautiful lockstep here this comes from david williams he said after all your success what keeps you motivated to come up with new things hmm. mr. david williams has uh, wants to throw you a curveball yeah mr david williams uh, <laughs> where's he at does it say it on his thing I think that I, unless this is a different David Williams, I think that David Williams is a Miami guy. He was in the office not too long ago. Shout out to David Williams. He was one of the first people to see this new amazing see, swag kit. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the problem. So you guys be letting people in there, all right? <laughs> that's the biggest problem with the youngins running the businesses around the Drew Estate. You can't be letting all these people running through our place. You got to. My boy Jeff at Corona Cigar Company, many of you guys know Corona Cigar Company, very dear friend, Jeff Bushwitz. He once came to, well, he used to be visiting me at the factory all the time, but one time he had come to the factory and I don't know how, but he got in and nobody got into the state factory. Willie, I see you laughing on my screen because Willie, you know, our guys know, but. The factory's on lockdown, man. Yo, first of all, the guard got, he didn't get, he got sent home for a minute and then <laughs> got thrown out and Jeff was like, <laughs> no, thrown out, sent out. Goodbye. This is a while ago. And Jeff was like, JD, you know, Jeff's a fighter. He's the kind of guy with that for him. He would <laughs> want to this fight with you. That would be like, threw me out of your factory. But he, I was, I went bananas over at, over at the, over at the place. Will you, your place at Teton at your mother-in-law spot, you guys are protective of your products there. I mean, you guys, right. You got to keep that. Keep it tighter, you have a you, you got to, man. You got to run a tight ship. <laughs> you got to be careful, especially being in Little Havana, man. You get uh, all kinds of uh, characters walking in there. 
Yeah, probably that David Williams been trying to beat. You what you're rolling with those gold. But I'll tell you who used to keep it really tight, even worse than Drew and State. I see Cuenca sees me, but Juan Martinez, Cuenca, his father, Alejandro, they used to keep. You guys are now more open because Drew State has bothered you enough, but you guys were like secret level. We had to, man. We had to. Too many vultures roaming around. <laughs> Dude, even me, with as many times I've been there, Every time I show up, I still got to wait outside the gate and then make a phone call. You know, there's a tall Cuban. There's a tall Cuban. (laughs) Where are you from? Okay. Make another phone call and then I get in. They they don't play over there. (laughs) Especially now, man. Especially now. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Well, now we're David Williams' question. It's just we gave, we shouted him out like five times. I feel like that's good enough as an answer. Next question. What was his question? We're, We're moving on. And we're moving on to Tammy Crabtree, who says, do you anticipate any type of shortage in different lines of cigars during this pandemic? Well, Tammy Crabtree, I know your husband, John Crabtree, very cool people also out there. that I always see in Orlando out in, over there, that area. Crabtrees, good people. Love you guys, man. It's for everything you do. So, uh, yo, I forgot the fucking question. <laughs> uh, do we? Is there is there going to be shortages of any cigars because of the coronavirus? Yeah, 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 yeah. Shortages. Um, let me check my executive handbook. You have you have the spreadsheet <laughs> printed out in front of you right now. <laughs> you got the big board. Let me check my executive handbook now that we've been <laughs> learned in in terms of those kind of issues. Listen, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to make sure that we have the inventory that we have, making sure that our space in Nicaragua is under the best care and the most loving hands and, and everything is squared away in Nicaragua, both at, our, at our, all of our different facilities, Drew Estate 1, Drew Estate 2, and nobody's seen Drew Estate 3. So for many of you guys have been out in Cigar Safari, thousands of people already over the years have come to Nicaragua for a three-night, four-day tour, for those of you who don't know. But guess what? There's a new building, new factory, new setup that you haven't seen. We've even built through all this craziness, true state. But we're going to have inventory pretty good because we we got strong cash flow in, in the United States. So we always hold a proper amount of inventory of our products in Hoya. But if things go through a little bit of, you know, if you love a product, you might want to snag it because we've been known to move product quickly. So what happens is if we might run out of certain things, so I'd make sure, you know, that you got something if it's really like certain people out there, you know how it was in the old day. If you smoked like a a cigar, that's it. You smoked one cigar. People were incredibly religious to their their blend, whatever it was, or even a size, not just like Liga or, you know, uh, Herrera or Undercrown. So... Yeah, we're going to definitely experience some new things. We are going to learn new things about ourselves. We are going to um, look at our product mix and and be able to uh, try and merchandise it as deep and across the country to make sure that all of our clientele, our beloved retailers throughout the country all get goods because we're doing a lot to listen to them to feel with them and to be part of what they're doing and and because they do it with us so i think it's really we're going to be really thoughtful about how we move inventory right right now beautiful all right and and manny velez congratulations manny you got a survival kit coming your way asks well i know it's hard to pick which barn smoker has been your favorite to date maybe not the specific location but is there a year he's saying like um, you know, Connecticut in 15 was perfect. What was your favorite specific barn smoker, like single instance? Uh-oh. He's you, making know, a- out of, you know, out of all of these Pappy Van Winkle stuff, the 23, 20, 15, the rye, all that, what's your favorite? Yo, for those Pappy Van Winkle dudes out there and dudettes, you know, you can't pick... The thing about the bond smoker is it's they're very inspirational. The people who go there and you see people connect and they 17, 18, 20 states, other countries, people coming from all over the place each year, Connecticut, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Louisiana, 
Florida with Jeff. Every year they're so different. I'd say that this year that just went by, now they're, they're like festival style in terms of uh, probably, um, this year was so good, it's hard to, hard to say, but. Uh, um, it's like picking your favorite child, you know, which, how could you, how could you possibly choose? Right, right. I probably say like Florida was pretty, pretty dope this year. I mean, they all were, Pennsylvania was crazy, but so just to give, just to give it up, I'd say like either, uh, either the uh, Florida bond smoker or the, uh, the Kentucky bond smoker. Cause remember the Kentucky was where it all started. Young man, the Kentucky was, was what made it everybody's. It was like, my dad called it field of dreams, field of dreams, because Everybody said, what do you mean you're doing a, an event in a barn, in a tobacco barn? Stand, yeah, I'm in the barn. We're going to stand in the barn. But we're going to play, you know, uh, uh, we're going to start it off with some public enemy inside the barn. People were like, and when I say people, meaning like our own people, people at your estate, they were like, well, we're getting ready to go to Europe. What do you mean you're doing this? Our first trip to Europe. I said, we're doing it no matter what. So I started going there every day and every night, getting the fifth place ready in Kentucky. And uh when the days came for the people to show up, it was like hundreds of cars getting parked and hundreds of people. So many that we donated everything to Cigars for Warriors, all the money, because we charged 30 bucks for entrance. You got like five cigars. And um, he said, it's a field of dreams because the cars were just parking up and down the street. If you build it, they will come, right? Yeah, which is, you know, when it comes to your aspirations and your dreams, that's important. If you build it, they will come. But from a business standpoint, I've learned otherwise sometimes that if you build it, technique is not strong enough for a company that's as, you know, that's, that's got to be in that layer where we are now, true estate. So you got to mix and that's the evolution of it. And, and Kentucky really touches on that evolution, that connecting things. True estate connects Diddle's politics. Drew State connects that. So when you saw Kentucky Fire Cured, um, Kentucky Fire Cured uh, tobacco, thinking of that and combining that with premium cigars is more on that same philosophy. That's what Drew Estate is really, it's crazy how we still got that, you know, that the company still has that rawness, you know, that, that local, you know, we're like on our block. And I love that still about the company. So yeah. And, you know, beautiful. Now, JD, you're not going anywhere. You just got done getting grilled. I think it's time we turn our attention to a Mr. Willie Herrera. Willie, how are you doing this evening? I'm, I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Now, JD bringing back some, some good memories. Oh, that's awesome. Now, Willie, I've, I've learned something in your uptick in social media. I've learned some things about you. You're big yeah. into like freestyle music. What, how's that been going? Oh, what, do you, what, do you man. Listen to? what do you like? Tell the people. Dude, I, I like it all, uh, but freestyle music in particular, you know, that, that music from the 80s, uh, early 90s, that just takes me back to my childhood and just some great times, man. Great, great times. This has got to be a little a little odd for you. I mean, because you're, I mean, we talk about the Norteño, but you're like a bird in a cage right now. I mean, you've been traveling consistently probably since you joined the company, right? What's it like just being kind of, kind of marooned and just getting to sit and... Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing for sure. This uh, has gone up considerably. My alcohol intake, uh, every, everyone would, you would ask back in the day, what do you drink? Oh, Willie doesn't drink, Willie doesn't drink. Let me tell you, times have changed, man. <laughs> 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 Thank goodness for the alcohol, man, because it, it is, uh, it's hard, man. It's hard and it's, uh, it takes some getting used to being away, uh, from the day to day and not to mention the hardest part, those teachers out there, man, props to you and props to my wife. Uh, she's no longer a teacher, but uh, man, that is a difficult job trying to get these, my two kids to sit down and focus in front of a laptop or a computer and do their schoolwork. And Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, uh, I feel you, man. I feel you. it's been rough. <laughs> <laughs> it's been rough. I'm Willie. I'm smoking the year of the rat now, but I next coming up, I got the, the TAA, which just started shipping recently. I'm excited to I'm, tell the people mm. about this cigar a little bit, dude. That cigar, that cigar is so so special. Uh, because when I joined Drew Estate, 
JD said to me, look at all this tobacco. And for those of you out there that have been to the uh, safaris and have been to where we, where we have all our tobacco, all the bales of, of, of tobacco that we have and that we use, uh, he took me in there and said, this is, this is all for you to use, you know, except broadleaf and Connecticut Habano. And uh, that was all he said, you know. Um, it was like yep. everything the light touches. It was like Simba. Everything the light touches, Willie, is yours. Yo, except, yo, over there. <laughs> except the broadleaf and the Habano, the stock of Habano. Right, J.D.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, Gary's phone was going crazy. So we'll just call <laughs> Gary. Probably walk in chin. Probably walk in chin. Tell him not to call Gary for another few minutes. In the meantime, I got a special surprise. I got a special surprise for Willie. Uh-oh. Yeah. So let's see if Joe Grow is going to kill me or not. Yo, Iran, I got a – don't hit it yet. I got a video. I dug up – now that I'm getting oh. computer, computerized over here, I got a – Apple computers and PCs and shit. I didn't even know how to spell. Now that we've been getting all computerized, we're going to bring to the interweb something very special that you have never seen. Really. <laughs> oh, man. I'm nervous now. You should be very, very protect your neck. <laughs> so, Aron, this is, this is a short video, Will. This is your very first trip. Oh Nicaragua. God! Very, very, very first trip to Nicaragua. You were still, you know, master blender and master doing everything over at Teton de Bronze. And I had invited you to come to visit in Nicaragua, the trip that you were just talking about now, where you walked into the facility and you saw the tobacco. Okay. You saw it. And this was your first two hours in the factory after we, <laughs> we had lunch at the factory and then we went to, to, the rolling area. So, Aron, throw it on there for a second. Short. It's only like 15 minutes. 15 seconds. Really? Mm. How you enjoy Nicaragua? Oh, man, I love it. I love it. Coming back? I love it. I'm already planning my next trip. Good man. What about that now? Now, Willie, what was that like your first trip down to Nicaragua? Shocking is the best word to describe it. It was uh, such an eye-opening experience, you know, never having traveled outside of Miami, really, much less uh, other factories, uh, Central America. It, when I saw that facility and the amount of people, the amount of tobacco, the amount of cigars being rolled, I mean, it was, it was shocking. I was, you know, I didn't know what to think, you know. Um, so going back to the question, uh, that cigar was the very first time I was allowed to use Connecticut Broadleaf. So I was able to use that tobacco. And so the, the Herrera Esteli TAA that you're smoking is the very first time I was able to work with that tobacco. So that's why, that's why that cigar is so special. Well, that's awesome. Now, everybody out there that's watching live, and there's many, many people watching live, I want to encourage you to keep asking questions. So we got, we got Willie, Pedro, and Juan. We are going to give away some more of these Liga survival kits, and that's how you win. You ask a question, we pick that question, and then boom, one of these is headed to your door. So now I have the first question for a Mr. Willie Herrera. What's that, J.D.? No, no, no. Uh, so this is from a Mr. Jason Hinky. Willie, are you working on anything new? And if so, when can we expect it to hit? Now, I have a, I have suspicion. Is he like a mole for Cigar Coop or Half Wheel or something? Don't give away any secrets now, Willie. But what are you working on? And when's Don't it coming? Don't tell him shit. Don't tell him <laughs> shit, bro. Careful. Hey, we're, we're, we're always working on a lot of things. A lot of things. Right. And uh, as far as when they're going to hit, stay tuned. So we're not this 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 current situation that's going on in the world. That's not we're still coming out with new stuff. Hey, we're we're always working. Like you mentioned earlier, you know, we might not be in the office, I might not be in the road, I might not be in Nicaragua, but we got email, we got phones, we're texting back and forth, we're you know zooming and going through Teams, and I'm putting stuff together and yo, yo, yo. You know, going stuff. You know, hang on a second, dude. We're always cooking. <laughs> this guy, hang on a second, bro. This guy is working on something so dope. 
that the marketing team, if I get too deep into it, we'll get all sorts of feedback and issues. It'll, it'll, it'll go boo, like this broadcast has been interrupted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, you, you know what? I'm going to give you a sneak peek. A sneak peek. Can I do a sneak peek, JD? Yo, yo, yo. I, you can maybe. Yeah, sneak peek. Maybe. Okay, a little, a quick. Let's see if you guys can see this. Ooh. Can you see any of that? Can you see those letters? JDN. JDN. What's that stand for? I have no idea. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> really? Oye, de Nicaragua, senor. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, that's nice, dude. That's a fucking plug. You get paid for that? They're going to kill us right. now, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, our next hey, question. No, uh oh. We're not you know, done? We're not no. done? We're rolling out the carpet? For a second, just for a second. And this one's cool because this one also, that was interesting was we didn't like get all technical. We know like there's new stuff that we always are working on. Uh, and sometimes you got to be really careful with what time you talk about it and how you talk about it because you got to make sure your shit is, is on tight, yeah. locked down. But one thing that's really exciting that Willie's doing, I'm going to take the liberty of just getting a little on it is the Undercrown 10th year, and we don't call it anniversary because Joey will kill me, but the 10th year of the Undercrown is coming this year. And that's cool because it, it's got the Willie and Pedro, but from a standpoint of Jack and Willie, you know, that product from being blended on our factory floor, which is very different than the way we make cigars in general, it's always by design from a standpoint of some passion project that either Willie, years and years ago, myself, Steve, Nick, other people who have all contributed. This is Willie's era. But Undercrown continues to be a product that was blended on our factory floor from when we didn't have any Nicar uh, any of the uh, Liga Privada and all those rollers were smoking it all. And we had to ask them to please stop for the sake of the system. And that's when that Undercrown got born. And now Willie is working with them in the 10th year, creating that special celebratory anniversarial stick. So, I mean, I'll take a little heat on this one for just saying it, the Undercrown 10, Willie, you enjoying that experience? I like it. I like it. Pedro Gomez is just salivating. He hears the word undercrown and he's like a, <laughs> like a dog. He's panting. My man, you know, undercrown was born in the factory floor, bro. A cigar for the people, a cigar by the people, by Drew Estate. 100%. Beautiful. Now, our next question for Mr. Willie Herrera comes from Timothy Hardison. Congratulations, Timothy. Uh, Willie, which of the Herrera Esteli lines was your favorite to come up with and why? My favorite. That that goes back to like the question that they asked JD. That's like picking your favorite child. You know, every time we come up with something, it's near and dear to us. Uh, it doesn't make it any better than the last one. So to 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 ask, you know, for me to pick one, it's just for me, it's impossible because I like them all. I love them all. Uh, there isn't one one particular one that I could pick. Yeah, maybe uh, a different way to ask it is like, was there a specific process like like the Habano, like the first time coming in and making your own, or was it like the Brazilian? Like, is there a specific process that was the most fun to blend, or like the most challenging? Look, you got, you got to remember where I came from. I came from a very small factory at the Donde Ronce uh, in Little Havana, Miami, and at the the peak of as far as tobacco that we had at any given uh, moment was maybe eight to ten. So right from the get go, when I came on board, you know, and JD walked me to that room and I saw all that tobacco, the challenge began. So that challenge is the same for every cigar uh, moving forward, every cigar from the past. Every one is you got to start, you know figuring out, all right, what am I going to use? Why do I want to use it? You know, how does this taste? How does this work? Everyone is special. Everyone is fun because you're, you're, you're dealing with tobaccos that change with time. And, you know, what, what tasted one way last year is going to taste a little different this year. 
So it's always fun. For me, the challenge of creating something is fun, period. So every cigar for me is fun, you know, because of that challenge and trying to create something different, trying to create something that's going to fill a void in our portfolio, create something, you know, uniquely different from everything else that we have. It's fun for me. That's the, the, the fun part of this, you know, the challenge. So every single one's fun, man. Yeah. Now I have another question from a Mr. Daniel Patrick. Congratulations, Daniel. What's the toughest blend to make consistently? So like, you know, you come up with this amazing blend and then it has to taste like this forever now. Every single one, every single blend is, uh, not difficult, but it's always a challenge because of what I said earlier, every year, the crops change a little bit and the tobacco changes a little bit. So no matter, it could be a, an acid, it could be uh under crown, it could be an under crown shade. It could be a Harris Lee. It could be a Liga Pravada. You're always, always on top of that blend because the tobacco changes on you. So it's never going to be exactly the same for any cigar. All right. Now I got, I got another one from a Mr. John Diaz. Willie, what were your expectations when you joined Drew Estate? Were the expectations from the company or my Even expectations? Yourself, yeah. I think, I think what were your personal expectations? My expectations were to oh, create to something uniquely different unlike anything Drew Estate had had prior to me coming on board. And Yo, don't so, be talking shit, dude. <laughs> hey, that's how it was. You know that's how it was. You know how that's why it took me a year and a half to come up with the damn blend. Because nothing was ever good enough. I you kept know. I kept shooting it down. Even when you guys would smoke and oh this is great. No, I don't like this. Give Yo. you another sample. Oh this is great. No, I don't like that. <laughs> so you know when when Willie when we when on that first trip where you saw that short little clip that Willie didn't get to see it because he can't see what, what the viewers are seeing. So he hasn't seen this clip yet. That, that the so, but one thing that struck me about this dude. So we're in Esteli and the second day or third day we were driving over from. Oh, you got, you had to go there, man. <laughs> we, were, we, we were driving over from some farm somewhere. <laughs> Either Gustavo Cura or Oliva Farm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, or something, and and we had come up to make the left in Esteli, where where the old world scars used to be, over where that statue is. is big old, it's a big, uh, beautiful statue. We make the left onto the Panamericana, and when we make the left, we're waiting for the light to change. Maybe even at that time there was no light because there was only one light in Esteli. Un semáforo on my street was the only light in all of Esteli. And I think we were going to make a left. And this girl is riding on this bicycle. The tequila, to the she had enchiladas and all of the food. And she goes to the factories and sells with her sister, cousin. And they still, and she crashed in the middle of the street on her bicycle. That was awful. She flipped right over. And there was blood on the street. All her enchiladas were all over the street. Everything. Willie was in the passenger seat. The chauffeur, uh, um... Chico, front, Chico, out in the back. I could see Willie's eyes. And this girl in the middle of the street, the, pan, the highway of the Pan American Highway that connects the whole world, she crashes her biker enchiladas, her little sauce, her salsa, her enchilada, everything into the street. And Willie tells the chauffeur, wait, you hold up. Tell that girl to come over here. And he pulls out 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30, I don't know what it was, $20, whatever, hands it to the girl. And I was like, that's a Drew Estate dude right there. Now, Willie didn't work for us. He wasn't Willie Herrera. He was Willie. He was a guy coming to check out the factory. I was looking at him suspect. <laughs> Every I remember them. I remember them. You remember, right, Pedro? Oh, I was driving the car, man. When Willie said to us, hey, stop the car. That was very nice of you, Willie. That show you who you are, bro. Hey, man, you know, that's, that was hard to watch. 
But that's an, an interesting thing because that's very similar to yourself, Pedro, for people, thousands of people who've been to Nicaragua, who stayed at our place where you used to run the facility in Nicaragua of the area of tourism. You've been at the company now how many years, Pedro? 14 years, man. Still yeah. counting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 14 years. That's an emblematic thing, like what happened with Willie. The thing about Willie that was interesting, it wasn't just that he gave the girl money. It's that Pedro knows what I'm about to say. So Willie just jumped up to go to the bathroom, whatever, get a drink. He was crying. Yeah, that's true. Willie was crying. The dude was big, six foot eight, six foot nine. Yeah. <laughs> He's got arms like that. No, that's like, true. Look, Absolutely, I, man. <laughs> so, and then that was the thing, Pedro, is Willie had a little couple that tear coming down. And I said, that guy's a Jewish. He's going he's gonna to work with us. He's going to Absolutely, be man. You know, there is some, one thing that nobody can teach you in life. And that one is called compassion. If my man Willie, you know, coming from Miami, and he felt the compassion towards my towards my people in Nicaragua, this is my dude right here, hands down, right here. And that's the thing, P, is because you got Willie, he's our Cuban piece to the puzzle. You got Pedro, our Nicaraguan piece of the puzzle. You got JD, and then we got Juan Martinez. Think about how, what makes our, that's why I really respect the Hoya de Nicaragua factory. It's like, we've been repping their product for 10 years. That's the only product we're distributing now. It's been a long time. The way they run their factory and the people, how long they've been there is a testament. We have people who are production people at our factory at high levels, whose parents were high level people and mid-level people, rollers and bancheros and rolleros at Hoya de Nicaragua. Our master blender trained at Hoya, the Nicar our um, factory, um, uh, what do you call it on the salon? Our guy who- uh, Production chef. What do you call Luis's position? Uh, is the production chef. Production chef. So he's a head of production and he, under, he works under Yesenia and under Rubio right. and, and Maria Yesenia, uh, who's unbelievable. She's the, the she's ridiculous. Unbelievable. So the staff in Nicaragua in terms of people used to say, how can you guys have gotten to, you know, how do you know tobacco? How can you do it? It wasn't just the marketing bullshit. It's, it was the level of, of people at the, who built it. So when the Nicaragua, team, the team we got, yeah, you, 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 you wouldn't be able to run this, this, this machine without the team we have, it would be impossible. Beautiful. This, I feel like we're really, this is a nice bonding session between all of us now and all of our hundreds of friends and fans watching. Now, Willie, one, one last question. I, I've seen Chef Willie Herrera working on some stuff. I've seen you do, got some flan going, you got some pizza going. Somebody asked you, I got to get his name <laughs> correct, Mike Artino, put together your perfect meal as far as, so your perfect pairing as far as food, drink, and cigar. So wrap that all up. Okay, so my favorite Cuban dish, which I haven't made yet, I made the Jamaican style, but I haven't made the Cuban style, is oxtail, all right, as we call it, rabo <laughs> and oxtail with white rice and black beans, that's real heavy, that's a heavy meal, of course, pair it with a Diet Coke, a nice cold Diet Coke. And after that, you're stuffed, but you still leave, leave enough, enough room for dessert. So then you gotta have yourself a piece of flan. Of course, of course. All right, then that, that tops you off with the meal part. And then, perfect cigar, man. Man, that's tough. Is it one of mine or, or, or Drew Estate in general or what? Well, I mean, that's that's in the eye of the beholder. You know, it would have to be something oh. heavy for me. With 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 a meal like that, it would have to be either the Harestly TAA, uh, T fifty two. Uh, let me see, an Antonio. It would have to be something heavy. Uh, it wouldn't. It, it can't be anything mild. You know, so anything heavy. Uh, is is how we end the night uh then i would transition from the diet coke probably to some eagle rare neat eagle rare bourbon 
That's beautiful. That sounds like a night. You might have to make that happen, Willie, if, if this thing goes on much longer. I need to see a picture of that. Well, I, I plan on making some oxtail next week. So let's see how it goes. My, oh, wow. Everybody... My, my, my pizza endeavor didn't work out, man. I, I hung up the towel on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Not a pizza chef, but you, you still got the flan. Wow. I got the flan under my belt. The, the pizza thing, I just I gave that up. That was too difficult, man. <laughs> you know, hey, it's not for everybody. Now, <laughs> what we have for, for our viewing audience is a, a little, a slick little video. I'm wearing the Barn Smoker hat. And uh, we, ha we have a Barn Smoker video coming to you guys here shortly. That, that kind of lays out our full year. Now, now Florida Barn Smoker has, has moved from May to November. November 13th and 14th are the dates. So we're, we're excited for all those coming up and, and check this out. We'll see you guys on the other side of this break. So if I talk to the end.
Welcome back, everybody, to Freestyle Live. We're doing something different for you guys. I'm sure most of you have been tuned in the whole time because you love us and you wouldn't miss this for the world. But for those that have missed, let me do a quick recap. You just saw an amazing video about all of our barn smokers. You're going to be attending the barn smokers, I hope. We got Pennsylvania coming up in July. We had to move Florida to November, so keep an eye on that. Um, we are giving away these amazing Liga survival kits. So we've already given away 10. Uh, the way you win this is you ask us a question, and if we ask any of our ambassadors this question, then boom, you won. That's that's that easy. So we have five more of these to give away, as well as a beautiful Hoya swag pack. Now let's not delay. Ooh, we got the bell. Let's not delay. Let's let's introduce the man himself, Pedro Gomez. Pedro, how are you? Man, we are doing very very good, man. But first of all, first thing first, before I say anything, uh -oh. let me thank everybody up there who's doing their best to make not just the United States, not just Nicaragua, not just any other country in the European, you know, all those people that are working in the front line. Thank you so much for your hard work. We truly appreciate it, you know. So the fact that we're working from home, but you guys are making the whole thing going, it is amazing. All the truck drivers, people that are working in the hospitals, people that are working in the supermarkets, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you guys do. Beautiful. Now, now, Pedro, I was talking to Willie earlier this week, and he said, I never thought I would miss an airport. Are you starting to miss airplanes, Pedro? I <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Come on, bro. You know, first of all, I didn't know when I signed to work for Drew Stay. I was just looking for a job, you know. I was glad to have a job at Drew Stay Factory. Somebody will tell me at that particular moment when I started to work at Drew Estate back in 2006. Actually, Pedro, yeah. I'm going to cut you off because our first question addresses this very topic. So pardon my okay. reading, okay. but Matt Galbraith, and I mispronounce his name, almost certainly asked, how surreal has it been for you in the growth of your career? So just keep going Oof. right where you left off. Boom. Man, that's a good question right there. So I will pick my main math. Thank you so much for your question, my brother. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for all the love that you have for Drew State and Hoya de Nicaragua, we are here with you. So when it comes to me, yeah, man, you know, uh, 2006, I was just happy to get a job at Drew State Factory. I was pretty much doing what they were, whatever they asked me to do. I was like, if anybody remember this movie, a classic movie, which is called Goodfellas. That was this kid. His name was John Henry. And he was yeah. the guy just parking the cars and stuff like that. Yes. <laughs> That was me. Oh my God, man. And the funny thing about it is that if somebody would all ever tell me at that particular time, hey, Pedro, you know, one day you will be traveling all over the United States. One day you were gonna go to Germany and to Holland, to Belgium to represent cigars that are handmade in your hometown, Esteli. I will be like, man, you are, I don't wanna curse. <laughs> I just gonna just leave it like that. <laughs> but I will be like, you know, man, you're crazy, bro. You know, something like that, you know, doesn't happen, you know. In Nicaragua, burn, uh, when you are born and growing in Nicaragua, there is little things that you could expect in life. Not the whole world is to you. To me, it has been a blast being part of Drew State and be working with people like you, man, like Jack, Jonathan, Willie, you know, my man Juan and everybody, you know, that works here in the United States and everybody, which I will never forget, people that work in Drew State Factory. It is amazing, man. And the thing is this, you know, when it comes to Drew State, it, not, it is not just Willie, it is not just Jonathan, it's not everybody that have ever worked for Drew State. And it's not me. Drew State goes way beyond that a lot of people might think. And the beautiful thing that really... Uh, put me in a place that I always go back to where everything started off is the people that made this thing happen. It is amazing. So you yeah, it has been a incredible journey. Right now, yeah, Pedro? The underground dogma, man, you gotta show some love to my people with cigar doji, you know? <laughs> yeah, Pedro, you know, so that, that's my dude right there. <laughs> Pedro, you're, you're, it's almost like you know what questions I'm picking because you're like you're like a step ahead of me. This is why you're the pros pro because our next question and I'm uh, the name is going to be just brutal to pronounce. Zola Sorensis asks, 
You just got back from Nicaragua. How's the atmosphere and how are the people in the factory? So, like my man, much love from Esteli, brother. So, first of all, you know, I know that this pandemic thing is affecting everybody. You know, not just here in the United States, you know, not just in Italy and Spain. It's affecting everybody. But one thing for sure is this, man. Nobody has the control of this. The only thing that we got to do is taking care of ourselves, taking care of our people. And one thing that Drew State is doing is making sure we have a full campaign going on, asking people to wash their hands. We provide masks to everybody, you know. We are providing a lot of information to prevent people to get infected. So, so far, I have been watching the news and I have been following the news big time. And thank God when it comes to positive cases, uh, we only have so far up to right now, we only have four positive cases that they are making sure that these people are under the watch. And things are still good in Nicaragua. And, and, and you know we are just taking care of our people down there. Yes, you're talking about Nicaragua. The, the right now there's four reported cases, and, and so luckily Esteli has been. We've been really spared from that. So thank God, thank God for that. In our Absolutely, yes. Pedro, the next question is from Peter Andreev. What is a typical day in the DE factory like? Oh, typical day, man. I, I, no, you were taking me back to my old days, bro. You know, when you work for Drew Estate, first of all, you know, when you come to work for Drew Estate Factory, first of all, you don't know nothing, you know. And, and, and come and work, they're going to teach you, you know, if you're going to be a roller, you're going to be a roller. If you're going to be a, a bonchero, you're going to be a bonchero. If you're going to be working in the uh, fermentation room, you're going to be just working in the fermentation room. If you're going to be working in salt culture studio, you're going to be there. At the end of the day, everybody has a function. And working for Drew Estate has been amazing, man. So you got people that comes from every neighborhood in Esteli. The beautiful thing that I truly remember, it throwed me back in the old days, is people that I went to school with. People that I went to elementary school, people that I went to high school. And, you know, some of them, they are making cigars. Some of them are supervisors. And it is amazing to see, you know, how being in the factory, and, and not just Drew Stay, every other factory in Esteli, not just Hoya de Nicaragua, Padron cigars, you know, that back in Esteli, everybody knows them by Cubanica, you know. And everybody needs Perdomo, Placencia, everybody provides jobs. And being in the factory, you can make a living and you can feed your family. If it was not for tobacco in my hometown, who knows where Esteli wouldn't be. But thank God and thank to everybody, not just in the United States, but everybody across the world that nowadays knows about Nicaraguan cigars. You are the ones that keep all, all of us, including myself, you guys are the one that keeps everybody employed. Just by buying a cigar, just by buying a Nicaraguan cigars, you are employing families down there. And it is amazing to me, yeah, growing up in the factory, coming work in the factory, it is amazing the commodity, uh, uh, Drew State, as, uh, as well as Hoya and Nicaragua, you know, that everybody knows everybody and everybody got everybody's back. And, and, and it is very hard to see in other industry. And, and it is amazing to see that brotherly hood and that sisterly hood, not just in the market of people smoking cigar, but also in the factory. That is mind blowing. Mm. That's one. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a little wrench in it. Now I don't get anything for for asking this question, but Juan, I have a question. What 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 would be the big differences if you were in the like if if I work for the Hoya factory and the Drew Estate factory? What would be some differences? What what approaches do you guys take differently? Oh, this is a question for me or for yeah, Pedro. This is just me asking a question. I'm not you know I'm I'm going off script here. Um, you know, it's making cigars is relatively uh, similar in, in most factories. I think it has to do a lot with the with the style. True State has, as Jonathan was mentioning at the beginning, you guys have style uh, from 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 the atmosphere, the the culture, uh, the attitude of people is different. When you go to Hoya, it's a little bit more traditional. Uh, we are more uh, heritage oriented. People are. Um, a little bit more calm if you want. We are not as big as, as the Drew Estate uh, factory. Um, but I think that every factory, in particular Hoya, we, we, we put into our products 
uh, a little bit of the essence of, of us, of who we are. In our case, we are 100% Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan owned, operated, and Nicaraguan made cigars. And there is a little bit of our tradition in, in each, each one of those cigars that, that, that we make. Uh, you know, a little bit of that, both roughness, but smoothness that we have in tobacco, but also in the personality of Nicaraguans. Um, I, think it's, I think it has to do, the biggest difference between Joya and Drew Estate, I would say, would be the style. But other than that, I, I think the love and the passion we both both companies share. That's beautiful. Now I'm I'm again I'm asking a question from a Drew Estate employee. This this employee does not get any credit. But JD, uh, Mr. Ryan Gallimore asked, "Who is in the uh, the safe house with you?" And and speak about the rumors of a Mr. Acid Gary or Acid Man Gary. What what's going on there? Oh man, this is he's laughing. <laughs> what's up? Okay. Is that Acid Man Gary? Yeah, that, that was formerly known as Baitfish Gary. It's when I changed like the J Duke, I think he was I turned it from J Drew to J Duke for a minute. Uh, it was it was a moment. It was a uh, so what was a question. I, I was Ryan Gallimore. I wanted to know about Acid Man Gary and who was who was in the live broadcast with you over there. Hey, I'll t- uh, Gary's in the live broadcast. He was he's hanging out, holding it down. With me in the Wimwood. Making sure we, we got all the all the weapons. Gary's in stealth mode right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what's cool, dude? Even while everything's going on here and we're all in different places, what's really cool is agriculture is still taking place around the world. Agriculture. Drew Estate is a, I feel, we're a very agricultural company. And when we look at things about doing things for, for the environment, the charities that we belong to with our friends at Bon Pro in, Est- in Managua, um, with uh, working on the rivers and everything in Nicaragua, bringing the water levels up for Esteli. Because Esteli is the north of Nicaragua. is not just like Esteli, that place where you get off the bus, they go to the cigar tourism. Esteli and the north, if you're un norteño, una norteña, this is a, a really big thing for us. So Drew State. We're going to talk about, you know, what things we're doing to the graphic, where we're making products this way, something taste, packaging that's cool, working with M&M, working with Paul Rosenberg, working with Pappy. But at the end of the day, we're an agricultural company. So it's like all these crazy geeks, like cigar geeks, like all these dudes. Yeah, weirdly, Pedro, Juan's kind of like, he reminds of like that high level Julio Iglesias, What's that, the son of Julio Iglesias. What's his name? Enrique. <laughs> Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> That's like our Enrique Iglesias. That guy's got that touch of class. I'd always said to oh, the fuck, get that kid, get that kid, <laughs> get that kid to work over at Hawaii in Nicaragua. Get that kid going with us. And you know, father would be like, my son is gonna do what he wants to. And I would say that guy will be a good dude to bring him on board. He got that style, good style. So, well, you were talking about agriculture, and this leads into our next oh. question from Mike Cook, Pedro. Talk about the light. What is the life cycle of a cigar from the time it is harvested, rolled? So, Pedro, you you've done many a tour on Cigar Safari. Ooh. You've lived this many times. Maybe some people aren't aware. <laughs> Tell, t- take them through the process. Holy shit, bro! I didn't know that that one was coming, bro. I didn't see that one coming. Uh, long story short, you know what? I'm gonna ask a quick question. Everybody's asking a question, but I'm gonna ask a quick question to everybody. If anybody can answer that one. Bro, we can give an extra toolkit. Is that right? How many hands have touched the cigar that you guys smoke? So let's see that, that answer rolling. You tell us how, how many. I'm 6,000. 6,000. Okay. <laughs> Five million. That's cool, man. You know, <laughs> you know, when I'm giving the tours at uh, uh, Drew State Factory, especially when it comes to Cigar Safari, Cigar Safari to me is my baby. And when I gave it this cigar safari and I passed the torch to Henry Pineda, my man Henry, shout out to my man Henry. I love you to death, bro. I was never grown. Jonathan Drew was never grown for you to be part of Drew Estate. What Henry is doing is amazing. But come back to the question. It goes like this. When I'm doing my tours, it's not about how, you know, how cigars are made. It goes way beyond that. Because cigars is art. Cigar goes way, way beyond of what you love here in the United States as your preference brand 
And it could be a brand from Dominican Republic, it could be a brand from Honduras, it could be a brand from Cuba, or it could be a brand from Nicaragua, or even a special, it could be a brand from Drew Estate. You come to Cigar Safari, we're gonna teach you everything from A to Z. So the question is, how many human hands has been touching this cigar that you guys smoke? If you bear with me, you're gonna be learning the lesson of the night. So everything is by hand. When you look at the cigar box, it say made by hand and Nicaragua. And one thing that I can tell you is this, absolutely 100% yes, it is made by hand. From the tobacco seed that comes from the tobacco flower, from the tobacco plant, from the, those little tobacco seeds that are the size of a, as a mustard seed goes into the seed bed. Then the seed uh, pro, uh, provides a beautiful baby tobacco plant. That baby tobacco plant goes transplant by hand into the tobacco fields. Once the tobacco plant is mature, then you got an army of people, you know, that goes and pick and prime. That's what they call prime. They prime one leaf at a time. That thing is just by hand right there. And then that leaf that has been already primed, cutting straight from the, from the stack, from the bottom to the top, it goes into a tractor, uh, into basket, then the basket goes into the tractor, the tractor takes those tobacco leaves that are green, fresh, straight from the, uh, the stack cut, it goes to the cure barns. Then you have an army of people passing the needle by hand, one leaf at a time. And then they hand those sticks that we call them in Nicaragua cujes, we let those Tobacco's uh, air curing, you know, it goes from green to yellow to light brown to brown, depending on the variety of tobacco seed that they're growing in that particular farm. And then after that, the tobacco goes to the fermentation, where you, you start to put all those different tobacco that has been already sorting, what is seco, bison, ligero, and different tobacco hens. Then you start to build those pilons that can hold between 5,000 to 8,000 uh, pounds of just pure tobacco. And then you start to ferment that tobacco. And what you do, you start to break and build, break and build. So what was in the top goes in the bottom, where it was in the bottom goes to the top, whatever it was outside is gonna go out inside, whatever it was inside is gonna be outside. And then you got that move going all over and over and over again until the tobacco is ready. And the beautiful thing is that after that, the tobacco goes has been hand selecting by the production ship. Now, right now, I'm in the zone right here. So, Yo, get him, Pedro, get him. <laughs> so, it has been <laughs> master class on <laughs> cigar making by Pedro Gomez, man. Well, free master class. So, the thing is this you know, the tobacco goes into the people that has been by that point, you got Willie Herrera that already has pulled the prime supreme prime recipe how the blend is gonna go then that prototype of that particular blend goes into mass production how you make a consistent cigar you make a consistent cigar hour by hour day by day big week by week month by month year by year and that's my good example right there Undercrown, a cigar that was born in the production floor in drew state factory and nowadays, you know, we are going to celebrate Undercrown 10, the 10 year that the cigar has been in the market. Then after that, the cigar goes to the, to the Asian code room. Then it goes to the ladies that put the bands in the cigar hand by hand. Then after, the guy, after that, the cigar goes to boxes. Then the boxes goes to master cases. The master cases goes to the container. Then it goes to Kendall here in Miami to the warehouse right here. And then from there, we break it down by order what boxes are gonna go to different cigar shop across the united states from new york my man brooklyn to the people in la and california to my people in dallas and texas to detroit michigan right there and then you got the midwest you know and then everybody gets a piece of the cake and then you got people that comes in chick chat in the lounge and they start to get one cigar at a time you know figure it out what they're gonna smoke and then you got the big help of the retailers that tell you what will be a good cigar for them to try. And then after that, the cigar goes to the end consumer hands. And then that's when they start to light it up. If that cigar really fulfilled the demand that you were asking and that you were expecting that cigar, that cigar will be a one that you're gonna be celebrating the most special moments. And it doesn't matter how bad it gets. It doesn't matter how good it gets. At the end of the day, we smoke cigars because somehow or another we count our blessings. 
And that thing from the moment that you light that cigar up to the moment that you are smoking that cigar down, you truly acknowledge your blessings. So share for everybody. Drew, stay for Ooh, life. baby. Yeah. Pedro, that was like, that Pedro. Was like, that was like going 40 from 40 from three point right there. Just boom. Pedro's on fire. <laughs> well, Pedro gives it to you straight. He tells you what's up. That's why for so many years, Pedro has just, that's speaking from the heart, you know, and Pedro, like you said, man, cheers, cheers to you. Cheers to Esteli, your hometown, Cuenca, Juan, your pops, your family, yo. And I, and also something that was really interesting before was the, um, we were talking a little bit about the Pedro, Willie, myself, Juan to some degree, we travel a lot between back and forth to Nicaragua and then onto the road, living on the road for, and between Nicaragua and on the road for, for so many years. You know, uh, what you said right there about Esteli and about our side of the business over there, you know, visiting so many countries, Mexico City, going up into the north in Mexico, looking at tobacco out of Mexico and Brazil, working with people from all those different places, whether it's Ecuador, Connecticut, one of the things that really sticks out for all of us is our experiences internationally and throughout the United States and meeting so many people who uh, have supported us and who have been right there with us along the way to build and to, you know, so Pedro, you just cheers to you, man. For, for Man, no, cheers to you guys. Absolutely, man. Represent correctly. <laughs> Our last question, Pedro, comes from Mr. Matthew Anderson. Pedro, what's your favorite thing about working at Drew Estate? My man, Matthew. That's a good question, brother. One thing that I can tell you is this, man. In life, whatever you got to do, you, first of all, you got to find where your heart is. Follow all with your heart. And the thing about passion, nobody can teach you them. To me, yeah. So I knew that Esther Lee was a cigar city. It was a tobacco city, but I didn't know how well known Esteli is. So to me, working for Drew Estate, yeah, it has been a journey. It has been a bless, not just for me, but my family back in Esteli, that somehow, you know, we make a living. And, and, and not just me, everybody that works in the factory. And the beautiful thing about Drew Estate, and as well as Hoya and Nicaragua, is that if you're really very 100% commit to your work and you show you know hard work in appreciation and you always care for for the well-being of drew state the destiny for you is just going up and up and up and up and up and to me i'm just somebody that came from esteli and the beautiful thing that i can take with me is the amount of opportunities that i can provide to other people and the amount of blessings that other people can provide to other people way behind me and way behind them. That's something that you cannot buy. So whatever you do in life, my brother, math, follow your heart. Find where your passion is. When you love what you do, you don't work, my brother. You share it and you preach. A lot of people say about preach, but you, man, I don't want to curse. <laughs> <laughs> but you fucking preach of what you believe. You got to believe first. There is not there, there is nothing up there that could can that could ever came close to what we we're talking about right here. Man, Pedro, you I... man, cheers to math. <laughs> Lucky winner. Good question. That Yo. was a, that was amazing, Pedro. Yeah, give him a couple bells for that one. That's at least a two beller. No, I took my shit off. Maybe I had a... No, we got you loud and clear now. Now, gentlemen, it is time to introduce Mr. Juan Martinez of Hoya de Nicaragua. Juan, how are you this evening? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. It's, uh, to be honest, it's, it's, it's an honor and privilege to be amongst so much talent and so much passion, starting from Jonathan, Willie, Pedro, and you guys. Uh, hearing Pedro and, and that passion and that love, uh, it's, 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 you know, it, it fills your heart. It fills your heart, and, and that's... That's one of the things that uh, makes this this industry so great. Uh, having so much love for for what you guys do. So thank you very much for having. It's it's a, quite a pleasure. 
uh, coming live from uh, from Nicaragua. Yeah, yeah, Juan. When you when we started this, it was bright out. Now, now you got to get some studio lighting. You got to get everything locked in. I, I had to get ready, man. I had <laughs> now, to get ready. I, I want to remind our audience to keep the questions coming. We're giving away now five beautiful swag packs from Hoya de Nicaragua for questions for Mr. Juan Martinez. So I'll start with the first one. Mr. TJ Baker asked a uh, question for Juan. I don't really know your background. Can you get a little, can you give a little info on you and your story in cigars? Oh, thanks. Uh, before, before I get into that, I want to, I want to follow up on Pedro and, and shout out to everybody who's out there. Who's uh, taking care of the rest of us and the people who can't stay home. Uh, there are so many people there, the medics, the, the, the nurses, and, and everybody who are, who are taking care of everybody else. So thank you to everybody, and, and thank you to everybody who's still uh, pitching in tonight. Um, basically, I'm, uh, I work for Joya Nicaragua, which is the, the oldest cigar maker in Nicaragua. It was established in 1968. It's a, it's a family-owned and operated company. Uh, I'm, I have the privilege of being the son of uh, Dr. Alejandro Martinez Cuenca, who is, who is the chairman of Hoya de Nicaragua. And uh, that's basically it, man. Uh, nothing other than that. Just representing uh, Nicaraguan passion, Nicaraguan love, uh, Hoya de Nicaragua. That's, that's who I am. That's a wonderful one. Now, Mr. Sammy Navarro has a very long question that I want to not stop. I, I stumbled a little bit on the last who? one. I'm not even drinking. Who? who what was that name? Sammy Navarro. Any relation to, to Tom Navarro? Uh, it's very possible. Uh, Sammy asks, after celebrating 50 wonderful years of cigars and all the amazing ratings from cigars you've been producing, especially the CT, Cinco de Cadas, and Numero Uno, what can we expect from Hoyas Cigars in the future? Well, that's that's actually a great question. Thanks for, thanks for pitching in, man. Um, you know, the... For 50 years, we've been we've been making cigars. We've been rolling cigars. Our people uh, been doing it for, for a very long time, uh, and we just make cigars for 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 you guys to enjoy, to appreciate. We don't make cigars for ratings or awards. Uh, it's really not our thing. However, uh, we are extremely grateful for for the people who have recognized the work that our people do in Esteli. Uh, the people like Halfwheel, um, Cigar Aficionado, Cigar Journal, uh, Dojo, who, who recognize the quality of our products. Um, and, and to talk about what's coming next is a little bit difficult because we still have a lot of things that, that most of our consumers don't know. Uh, Hoya Nicaragua has been around for many, many years, but not everybody has smoked all of our products. So we still have a bunch of products of cigars that we are going to be uh, reintroducing to people so that they can, you go back to the original Nicaraguan cigar. Uh, we're focusing a lot of our recent releases. We still have a long way to go with a Daño Sete, uh, which is our, our, our most recent release last year and that got a great awards. Um, I think it, it's still not available all over the country. We're still getting it to people's hands. Um, so we're working on a, a couple of very special projects. We're not going to be introducing uh, new big brands, but we're going to be focusing on small, uh, fun and exciting projects, uh, some of which uh, Willie already did a spoiler alert over there. Jeez, that, uh, guy, that guy's unbelievable. So expect a little those, teaser, just a little teaser. Just a little teaser, man. That's a, <laughs> a little taste. Uh, and that's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. And we have a couple of, of projects like that coming coming up uh, soon. So, so wait for it. On the meantime, while we're in this, while you're at home, while, while you guys are uh, staying safe, make sure you enjoy a lot of uh, uh, True Estate products and Hoya products that you haven't tied in the past. Uh, in between both companies, we have perhaps the largest portfolio uh, uh, in the market of exciting things uh, uh, that you still have the opportunity to try out. Juan, now this is a question for me. Nobody's getting a prize for this, but you guys did something pretty cool this week. I saw a video. You guys created. Well, ain't nobody amazing. getting a ain't nobody getting a prize for it is correct. <laughs> I was I asked and asked if I could get some extra stuff, but I might just have to I might have to five finger discount some stuff. What did you guys do earlier this week with the uh, the the Cinco de Cadas book? Uh, well, that's that's actually uh, was, uh, our our team's initiative. You know, while everybody was. Staying safe in home, we thought that what, what what could we do? What can we do? You know, everybody's is home, taking care of their families. So we decided to release our our book 
for free. Uh, this is a book that we uh, introduced in 2018. It's called Cinco Décadas, The Rise of the Nicaraguan Cigar. And it basically is about the story of Nicaragua, the Nicaraguan people. It's a story about Nicaraguan tobacco and how the Nicaraguan industry came about. And of course, how Joya de Nicaragua uh, came to be the first uh, Nicaraguan cigar. So we introduced it. It's available for free reading online for anybody that, that wishes. I have it actually around here. If you guys want a free read, uh, it's, it's actually quite interesting, intriguing. It was written by um, uh, a good friend of ours, Nick Hammond, uh, a journalist, a cigar journalist. And we have a lot of people in the book, including Jonathan, a lot of the Jew State people. So it's a fun, interesting read. And you can just read it free online at a storyofresilience.com. And the reason why I wanted to do it is because uh, the story of Nicaragua, the story of Joya de Nicaragua, and the story of the Nicaraguan cigar industry is a story of, of, of valor and of resilience. We've gone through so much, so many challenges that we've been able to overcome over, over our history. And this is one, one of those moments in which people need to, you know, sit back, relax, think about the future, think about where we are now as a society, and we need to keep strong and we need to be resilient. We need to come back better, stronger than, than what we were before. I think that where we are right now as a, as a global community, it's, a, it's, it's an important point that uh, we all need to explore on what's coming next. Uh, we're, we're slowly going to become better people. And uh, that's basically the story of, in this book, a story of resilience. That's amazing. Now, this next question comes from Andrew. And Andrew and Allison are good friends of mine. I've never actually attempted <laughs> to say their last name. I, I don't even know. Andrew, you you know what your last name is. I don't even want to embarrass myself on, on uh, live air. But what is your favorite story about the history of Hoya de Nicaragua and Nicaragua? Well, that's a that's a tough one. As a Nicaraguan, I'm, I'm biased. Uh, you know, I think going back to to my previous comment, uh, the, the story about resilience, and 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 tying up with Pedro's own own perspective on this, uh, I think it had, my my favorite story has to do with me personally, and it's one of the first times I, I sat down at, at the factory uh, with with Lionel, who is our factory, who was to our factory manager. He's a guy who's been around for almost 40 years in the industry, one of the first things that he told me was that uh, we do this, we do what we do, because we want to make sure that people, when they go out of here, they have a better life, that they have a better livelihood, they are a better person, they are you know, better human beings after they end up being uh, doing what they do. Uh, and that, at that point, I realized that Beyond the product itself, beyond the marketing and beyond the, 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 the cigar band itself, this is an inherently humane product. This is an inherently humane activity. Uh, Pedro was mentioning more than 300 pairs of hands involved in making this cigar and thousands of people whose lives are influenced by this product. And that sort of landed me in, 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 in the ground and said, you know, what, what we are doing, what all of us here are doing has a powerful impact on people, on the life of people. Not only the, the cigar makers, the rollers, the tobacco rollers, but also on cigar smokers, retailers, and everybody. And that story, uh, that small anecdote, sort of guides me and guides all of us on, on everything that we do, that, uh, that beyond everything, we always have to have the person on top. We have to have the person as a priority. The people, especially in Esteli and in Nicaragua, as our ultimate goal whatever we do. So uh, that's for me was the, the, what drives me, what drives, I know Jonathan and what drives a lot of us in the industry is the people itself. Amen. I love you, bro. <laughs> love you too, bro. You're the best, bro. You're the best. Yo. We'll make them speeches around here. Like, <laughs> all right, all right. That's a third cap, man. I'm counting. Third cap on, on your head. <laughs> I this think it's five or six. I think that's at least the fifth or sixth different hat change. Yo, but hang on a second. So with all this going down, I mean, Willie, all you people, Iran, you got that. Pop one of those videos I caught today of the farm in, in, in Connecticut. You got to throw one on there super duper quick. Catch you at a, at a moment. 
catch you, catch you with a shot of agriculture, of something that's beautiful going on. Throw that one of that of the um, of the drone that goes over our fields. Show the field. This is a drone piece. I love this. Piece. Tell me when it's live. You gonna play the whole thing or just half? How long is it? back and then we'll talk about the fields yo so this is this is while we all have going on we have going on things are moving along people are growing tobacco people are processing materials people are working in industry across the world in agricultural side of things more rural um that field there if you guys know that liga 10 or that h99 those are hybrid tobaccos and that field there is going to be representative of one of the tobacco fields where we'll grow tens of thousands of pounds of that material there. So we just received that in today, which is nice. I really enjoy receiving from the farmers. We work with uh, with farmers from around the world, um, from Ecuador to 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 uh, Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican, you know, the whole the whole world. And inside the United States is something beautiful. How we're able to work with so many farmers, whether it's Kentucky or Connecticut. Pennsylvania, all over the place that we, uh, um, Louisiana, beautiful. The agriculture side of it is tremendous. So we get a night, couple of nice videos every couple of days, different things coming in, um, the working tobacco. You got that nice one also of that farm that's loading the tobacco we caught of the loading the tobacco. You got that one around of them? Uh, yeah, yeah, throw that harvest piece, a short clip, it's nice. Don't break, man. Fuck. You guys can't see this shit, but this is cool video. So you guys, I don't know if you saw the... Uh, Thank you. I'm sure everyone will watch again in post. This is just us, right, Aron? All right, so we have, we have two questions left, and I think we're going to be a little early, but that's fine. Beautiful. How many yeah. So now, now Juan, I have a question for you from Joshua Hoppenrath. Kind of Juan asks, he says, Juan, how has the partnership with Drew Estate helped Hoya de Nicaragua produce new products and expand? That's a, that's a great question, man. Um, and, and I always make sure to, to let people know and how, how this, this partnership and this relationship has, has evolved. Um, you know, it was 2007, and and my father who was a very traditional, old school guy. Uh, sat down with with Jonathan Drew, and he explored the possibility of of Drew Estate distributing Hoya de Nicaragua, and and it was exciting times, man. It was exciting times, and 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 for for many people, actually, it's, many people doubted that this was going to be a successful relationship for for many years. But here we are, almost. Uh, 13 years later, and uh, so we become more than than partners. We become uh, uh, almost brothers, families. Uh, we go beyond beyond business. We go beyond uh, the product themselves, and and everything that we do, and everything that we uh, create is in partnership uh, with Drew Estate. Uh, every everything that we've done over the past 10 years has been inspired by or collaborated with. Uh, or supported by Drew Estate, by Jonathan and, and the whole creative team and the whole management team. And Drew Estate has been instrumental in, in transforming Hoya de Nicaragua in, in, into what it is today, from not only the most Nicaraguan cigar, but also a you know the, a, a leader in, in cigar making around the world. Uh, Hoya de Nicaragua remains or keeps its essence, uh, its, its true spirit, its true nature, its true nature. Uh, but we continue to be uh, pushed and, 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 and promoted and, and excited by, by whatever Drew Estate does. So we are, we are, we are Yo. extremely thankful. Yo, it's a new hat alert. New hat <laughs> alert, man. Look at the sand We Hola. have a special guest. <laughs> we also have a special guest here. Uh, she's asking why people are laughing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't yeah. speak Spanish, but <laughs> okay. very serious. 
All right, now to wrap up our final question, our final prize of the evening. Wait, 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 before you do that. Uh oh. There is something special. Speak, sp speaking of speaking Spanish, because at Truist, <laughs> coming from Pedro, my man, you probably know what I'm about to say, but today is not only is it an incredible day for Truist State amongst all of the pain, a moment of introspection, a moment of celebration, a moment of with our, our, our Brotherhood in Nicaragua's uh, company. Did you guys know that Selena, this is the 25th anniversary since the oh, passing of Oh, now you talk. You guys know Jennifer Lopez when she did the video, the movie Selena. That was an incredible, incredible artist from Mexico who yeah. was so impactful to Drew Estate and to every person who I knew. You know, so that's like a big deal. I even wrote it down because I was like listening today, dreaming of you. <laughs> hey, I know you want all sorts of like Pedro Gomez. Juan, I don't know if you know this, but Pedro Gomez, when he went to college in the United States, this guy won every dancing award for Salsa <laughs> number seven in the I don't, I don't doubt that, man. We call him the Elvis. Elvis. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> So we've always been very music based. You know, a lot of hip hop back in the day, bachata, reggaeton, all of that. But for, for the 25th, they can't get together this year. Usually there'd be a massive celebration for Salina. But from Drew Estate to all of the Latinos, all of our Mexican brothers and sisters, uh, the celebration of Sal uh, Salina was a huge thing for us. And uh, I just, just wanted to say it because uh, not just about j-lo it's bigger than that well, that was beautiful <laughs> that was now i will i will we let's let's get into it after our final question from a mr ethan miller to juan he says uh juan what is it like to be able to share a nicaraguan product with the entire world ethan thanks man thanks for the question brother uh before i get into that i i want to uh respond to some of the questions I think people in Facebook have been have been asking. Uh, right now, people in Esteli, people in the factories, they're, everybody's safe. Uh, some of us have taken a, an early break for the for the Easter week. So everybody's home. They're taking care of their loved ones. They're taking care of themselves. So thank you very much for asking. Thank you, everybody who's been, uh, who's been uh, uh, curious about the, thing, the situation in Nicaragua. Uh, with, as Pedro mentioned before, everybody's taking the, the precautions to make sure that, that everybody stays safe, washing their hands, having all the equipment. Uh, so right now we are, we are safe, we're healthy, and we're taking care of, uh, of our people. So thanks, thanks very much for asking. Um, so the question, uh, you know, when, when I began, I, I wasn't born under the shade of a tobacco plant, some uh, none of us were here in the in this in this group, but uh, some of our a lot of our people in the industry were were born under the shade of a, of a tobacco plant as a fourth fifth generation of tobacco growers. Uh, but one of the things that drove me to to work in this business was uh, the, the possibility of sharing our Nicaraguan history, our Nicaraguan culture, and our Nicaraguan identity to the world. Uh, it's been it's been one of those fantastic and magical journeys to be able to to travel around the world and meet so 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 many interesting diverse people uh, through a single product through through the cigars through our cigars through a Nicaraguan made cigars uh, you know for all those of you who know Nicaragua this is a, a relatively small country we don't have a lot of products that, that we sell or export around the world so to be able to share our cigars with people who in more than 60 countries around the world, it's quite a privilege. And, and that's actually one of the things that drives me to be able to tell the story of our country, of our people, uh, to our colleagues around the world. It's what keeps me coming uh, every day to, to the factory and make sure that we represent our people and our, 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 our city of Esteli and our country well uh, through this product. So, so yes, I, I can only say that it's a blessing for all of us to be in this industry and to be able to work in this in this product. Juan, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen. I'd like right. to thank all of you guys for coming this evening. Does anybody have any 
any powerful speeches, any potent thoughts that they would like to leave our fans and wonderful viewers that have joined us tonight? I do. I do. I just want to, I just want to go uh, to one of the quotes in the book that I mentioned yesterday. And uh, it's, it's a small quote, but I think it's very powerful. And it was written by Nick Hammond. And it basically says, in hindsight, it's often one's darkest hours which offer the key to a brighter future. And I think that nowadays uh, that we're at home with our families, with our loved ones, it's a great moment to think about uh, a better future that, that, that we need to build for, for humanity, for our communities, for our families, man. So, so stay safe, everybody. Take care of your loved ones. Take care of your older, older ones and uh, of your young ones. Thank you guys for, for having me. Thank you, Willie. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Jonathan, Aaron, Jack. Thank you, man. Pleasure, man. Whoa, whoa, hang on. And thank you to all of the Drew Estate of our TMs, bombs, all the Drew Estate sales force who, you know, they're not just a sales force. They're just an incredible organization who were part of this as well and who've pushed so much and pulled so much into this culture that we have at Drew Estate. You guys, I, I see you guys chatting and stuff like that. Thank you for, to all of you guys. We were just talking about it offline, how much you guys have just incredible team we have on, out there on the road who just like our factory in Nicaragua, it all comes together and interlocks. And that's what I love about when you guys are in Nicaragua with us and how excited you guys are, all that beautiful connectivity. For that connection back and forth on a final note, thank you to everybody who put this together, both on the Drew Estate side and, and to also to all of the people on the, uh, on the other side who, uh, who uh, share the love and bring us into their daily life. We deeply appreciate it and we, um, You'll never know how much we appreciate how much we vibe off of it and how much we care. So uh, thank you to everybody. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Pedro, do you have thank any? everybody. Yes. Thank you, everybody, especially everybody up there. Thank you so much for everything, man. Thank you so much for your business. That means a lot to all of us. We will never be here where we are without you. So keep smoking. Keep sharing life because God is good. Well, excellent. Thank I want to take one last opportunity to thank all of our viewers. Uh, we're really happy to turn a negative situation into a positive and kind of get together with you guys for this virtual herf. Hopefully, you know, this, this all ends beautifully. We might, we might come back with another virtual herf. Who knows? I'm not going to say never. Thank you to Iran who produced this whole thing. Thank you to Jonathan, Drew, Pedro Gomez, Willie Herrera, and Juan Martinez for joining me this evening. And thank you guys so much. You know where to find us next time. Peace out. Thank you, guys. Bye.